Time from Washington, Sam Donaldson. The FBI runs what is considered the most prestigious crime lab in the country, a place that federal prosecutors and local police departments rely on for crucial evidence in some of the most important criminal trials. Now a high-ranking agent who works inside that lab is making very serious allegations about the way the lab does business and the way it presents its findings in court. He speaks tonight publicly for the first time to ABC News Chief Investigative Correspondent Brian Ross, who reports that the charges, if true, could wreak havoc with hundreds of high-profile cases, ranging from the Oklahoma City bombing to the World Trade Center to the O.J. Simpson murder case. This is startling evidence. It's evidence of uh, fabrication, of misleading jurors, uh, of, of basically committing perjury. And I've never seen an FBI agent ever take the stand and say that his supervisors told him to lie and to frame defendants on a trial. If he attempted to publicly disclose the allegations he has, he could be fired, regardless of how significant those allegations are to the American public. Until tonight, the FBI had tried to keep secret what Agent Fred Whitehurst had to say. Tried to keep secret the fact that one of its own agents, a highly respected and distinguished one, was alleging an ongoing pattern of criminal misconduct inside the FBI itself. A short while ago, the FBI permitted Agent Whitehurst to speak with Primetime Live. We'll have that interview later in the broadcast. But first, Agent Whitehurst's story. His allegations involve the FBI's famed scientific crime lab and are contained in a series of damning internal memos sent to Whitehurst's FBI bosses and obtained in a primetime live investigation. While some of what Whitehurst talks about seems rather procedural and arcane, there are also detailed allegations of perjury in a big case in Georgia, fraud in a number of FBI lab reports, even fabricated evidence in the World Trade Center bombing case. Quote, we find ourselves aligned against an administration that demonstrates that its first allegiance is determining guilt and to hell with truth. If we hadn't found these documents? This whole situation would remain a secret from the American public as it has for years. He's talking about a number of cases over five years. That's correct. Fraud, perjury, altered reports. Correct. And a place that's supposed to stand for integrity. That's correct. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Agent Whitehurst's startling allegations involve some of the biggest cases the FBI has worked in recent years, including the World Trade Center bombing case, where Whitehurst was in charge of analyzing the bomb residue. This case is sure uh, shaking us to the roots as to whether we can trust the FBI and, and how they perform their job, that's for sure. John Jacobs and Valerie Amsterdam are defense lawyers in what's known as the second of the World Trade Terror Cases, now underway in New York. They forced the FBI to let Whitehurst take the stand last month and talk for the first time in public about the conduct of the FBI lab. Once we began to ask him questions, and it became clear to the jury what he was there to testify to, that being the pressure, the physical threats by agents in the bomb squad to get him to lie, the jury just couldn't believe it. They really couldn't believe it. What Whitehurst says happened was that after FBI agents arrested suspects in the bombing and found certain chemicals in their homes, the lab came under pressure to conclude the bomb was made of the very same chemicals. In his memo, Whitehurst says one agent, quote, altered the output of one instrument to reflect information that would have, if presented in its altered manner, been scientific fraud, unethical, wrong, and very damning to the defense. If you read this memo, I think what you're looking at is fraud under any context. Criminal fraud? Probably. But Whitehurst's lawyer, Cohn, says the FBI lab section chief did not want to change the altered report and was furious Whitehurst made it an issue. They didn't say to him, Fred, we'll take this under advice, thank you, or Fred, mind your own business. No, they screamed, pounded, and threatened. And then the saddest thing in this memo is, I dropped the matter. If that was you or someone you loved who had been arrested, would you want that agent at that time to drop the matter? 
In his memo, Whitehurst says it was only after he threatened to expose the alleged fraud in court that his FBI superiors finally let up on the pressure to go along. And in the end, the FBI never did reach an official conclusion about the exact nature of the bomb. If Whitehurst didn't have the guts to come forward, uh, we would have a lot of uh, uh, false testimony before this jury and before the World Trade Center jury. And there's more. According to the memos, another FBI agent had been altering Whitehurst's lab reports for five years without Whitehurst's knowledge, apparently to slant the conclusions and opinions in favor of guilt. Quote, he had altered the reports. I had the evidence. I presented the evidence to the section chief, and nothing has been done to repair those reports. They sit in the files of the FBI without the slightest effort to change what are in places incorrect opinions. The agent Whitehurst says altered his reports was this man, FBI agent Tom Thurman, who four years ago was honored for solving the bombing of Pan Am Flight 103 and is now one of the lead lab agents working the Oklahoma City bombing case. Agent Thurman did not return our repeated phone calls to him at FBI headquarters. But Mike Tiger, the lawyer for Oklahoma bombing defendant Terry Nichols, says the new allegations against Thurman go to the heart of the Oklahoma City case. It's not Mr. Thurman or Mr. Whitehurst or some of the other people mentioned in these documents that's important. The question is the integrity of the results. They're bringing these results into court and trying to take the life of my client. The other FBI agent Whitehurst has accused of wrongdoing is Acting Scientific Analysis Section Chief Roger Martz. Yeah, Mr. Martz, what is your occupation, sir? I'm a special agent with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Martz was a recent witness in the O.J. Simpson case, where he denied the FBI would bow to pressure to help prosecutors make their case. And so when you went to conduct your test, did you go into it with any bias as to what you would or would not find? No, I did not. But Whitehurst says Martz, who declined to talk with us, was one of the FBI agents who pressured Whitehurst to go along with allegedly altered test results. In, in more than 32 years of practice, I've never seen anything quite like these documents. After we showed the Simpson defense lawyers the documents we we found about the FBI lab. Johnny Cochran went into court this morning to ask Judge Ito to call Agent Whitehurst as a witness. Cochran spoke to me in New York from his office in Los Angeles. These memos, as detailed as they are, say nothing about the Simpson case. Why does this really pertain to your trial? Where you have an agent who has a propensity or proclivity to, to testify falsely, to perjure him or herself, to fabricate evidence, they don't just do that in one high-profile case, whether it's Waco or the New York Trade Center. That is, becomes a pattern because they can get away with it because they think once they determine who the bad guy is, they can then go after that person and the end justifies the means. There are hundreds of cases involving the FBI lab which could now be challenged because of Whitehurst's allegations, including significantly a 1991 Georgia case prosecuted by the man who is now the director of the FBI, Louis Free for whom the case was a milestone in his fast-rising career. The case involved a series of pipe bombs that killed a federal judge and a Georgia civil rights leader. In one of the memos obtained by Primetime, Whitehurst accuses FBI agents Martz and Thurman of what he calls fabrication of evidence and perjury in the case, and giving scientific conclusions about gunpowder and paint samples they were not qualified to give. Quote, he, Thurman, simply fabricated this information to support his hypothesis that the bombs in this matter were all made by the same individual. Whitehurst first made his allegations to the FBI more than 20 months ago, but as of today, the agents he has accused of fraud have kept their jobs or even been promoted. That's correct. Could it be he's wrong? What's on the public record completely supports Dr. Whitehurst. For his role in the World Trade Center case, Agent Whitehurst was given an award by prosecutors, presented with FBI Director Free standing next to him. But then, a few months later, Whitehurst was given an unwanted transfer to the paint chip division as a trainee, no longer the FBI's top man in bomb residue analysis. He made the allegation as long ago as December of 1993 in this memorandum to the Inspector General's office. Still no action that we know of. There was action taken. 
<laughs> there clearly was action taken. They relieved him of duty. They demoted him. He now analyzes paint chips. That's action. You may not like the action, but that was definitely action taken. The Bureau stood up and did what they were going to do. And in this particular case, they policed themselves. They stood by the people who were in the wrong and punished a person who I actually see as a true American hero. Startling allegations. And just moments ago, Agent Whitehurst spoke exclusively with Brian Ross. We'll have that interview when we come back. Do you get lint instead of clean? Try new Scott Clean with Thirsty Fiber Weave. And since there's not all that lint, everything's cleaner. New Scott Clean. Sam Donaldson. A statement released by the FBI today says that in response to FBI agent Whitehurst's allegations, the Bureau, quote, has reviewed more than 250 cases involving work previously done by the laboratory, and to date, no evidence tampering, evidence fabrication, or failure to report exculpatory evidence have been found, unquote. Still, the Inspector General's office continues to investigate Whitehurst's allegations. Brian Ross spoke with Agent Whitehurst just moments ago. Agent Whitehurst, before we begin, the FBI says they want to make it clear that you are expressing your own personal opinions. You're not here as a spokesperson for the FBI. Yes, that's correct, sir. You've seen what the FBI is saying, that your allegations have been checked out, 250 cases, and they haven't found what you say is there. What do you say to that? Well, sir, I'm obviously disagreeing with my superiors in this matter. This report, sir, is garbage. It's garbage. The FBI statement is garbage. It's garbage. Yes, sir. I personally know about the review of those 250 cases, sir. They say they found no evidence of evidence tampering. Has there been evidence tampering? Uh, sir, I, uh, yes, I believe there has been evidence tampering. At the FBI lab? Yes, sir, I believe that. The defense team for O.J. Simpson wants you to appear in court next week. Are you prepared to go? If the FBI orders me to go, if the Department of Justice orders me to go, then I will go, sir. I know you've been told you can't talk about specific cases, but do you have information that is pertinent and relevant in the Simpson matter? No, no, no. Sir, I cannot answer that question. I cannot answer that question. Would you go somewhere to testify if you had nothing to say? If I had nothing to say, I would advise my superiors that I have nothing to, to say, and, uh, and they would take it from there. Is it worth your time going to California to testify in the Simpson case? You've made serious allegations about uh, Roger March, who was an FBI witness at the case. Sir, I can't talk about these matters with you. I've been ordered not to talk about these things. It's part of the agreement, as you're aware. But you're prepared to testify at the Simpson case uh, if the subpoena comes through from Judge Ito? I am prepared to testify, yes. Why are you doing this? You have been given a transfer you didn't want. You have been ostracized by some. Why, why do this? May I show you something, sir? The proudest moment in my life was when I received this. The proudest moment on the stage at Quantico. I'm an FBI agent. I swore to uphold the Constitution of the United States, sir. And I swore to enforce the law. There was no caveat in that swearing, if you will. If I caught persons with badges, I would turn my back. I am an FBI agent. It's my duty, and I have no choice in the matter, and I have been ordered by the director of the FBI. I have no choice in the matter, sir. One final note from Los Angeles tonight. An appeals court has refused to throw out Mark Furman's testimony in the O.J. Simpson murder trial. The court has also rejected a defense request to recall Furman to the stand. We'll be right back. Primetime Live and ABC News.